During this presentation, you can follow along with us through the video or live on the website. It's fully mobile responsive if all you have is a smartphone. Just click Visitor Access and enter the code. It was built using the fantastic content management service, Squarespace. We are Pacific Rim Marketing, and we are here to present Groceries. Groceries is a revolutionary grocery delivery service that can source foods from many of your favorite grocery stores, not just one. Through our website and future mobile app, customers will shop, schedule, and finally enjoy their groceries at delivery. To start our company, we've selected the City of London in the UK as our starting point. Let's start by going into why the UK. The following is a look at the economic environment of the United Kingdom. The economic system of the United Kingdom is a mixed system comprised of state ownership of some companies, private firms, government-linked companies, social welfare, and welfare payments. Therefore, the economic system in the United Kingdom is neither solely free market nor is it solely command controlled. The United Kingdom is a developed country and has the fifth largest economy in the world when ranked by gross domestic product. As of Q4 2015, the balance of payments for the United Kingdom is negative. There is currently a trade deficit in the United Kingdom indicating that more goods are being in imported from foreign markets than are being exported to foreign markets. The United Kingdom has trade relations with many countries outside the European Union, including the North American Free Trade Agreement, uh, some Caribbean islands, and with Asia and the Pacific as well. The GDP of the United Kingdom as of 2015 is estimated to be 2.849 trillion US dollars. This ranks the United Kingdom as having the fifth highest GDP in the world, with the United States, China, Japan, and Germany ranked first through fourth, respectively. The estimated population of the United Kingdom as of 2014 is 64 million people. The gender breakdown of the population is 49.7% male and 50.3% female. The total value of foreign debt in the UK is $9.529 trillion. The United States of America is the only country in the world with a higher total foreign debt value. Based on the tertiary education or post-secondary education levels as of 2013, which is the latest data available, the United Kingdom ranked number seven in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development with 39.4% of the population having completed some form of tertiary education. Approximately 78% of the economy of the United Kingdom is the service sector as a percentage of GDP. The service sector is made up of creative industries, social services, financial and business services, hospitality, public administration, real estate services, tourism, transport and storage, and wholesale and retail trade. The remaining 22% is comprised of agriculture, construction, utility supplies, manufacturing, and natural resources. There is very low political risk in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom has a stable and efficient business environment with a low probability of corporate default. The corporate tax rate is at 20%. Personal tax rates range from 20 to 45% based on income levels. Primary sources of law in the United Kingdom are legislation, common law, European Union laws, and the European Convention on Human Rights. Over the period of 2010 to 2015, the United Kingdom has undertaken an effort to reduce the amount of business regulations. Why London? Well, that's boiled down to the market size, societal wealth and service affordability, political environment, infrastructure, transportation, industry and technology, and customer taste and culture. There's a good population density for the service, and most people use public transportation. Home delivery could be extremely valuable to busy individuals there. It also has a high medium income, and 75% of Londoners could afford the service we're offering. The English government consists of a constitutional monarchy with a dual parliament. The parliament consists of the House of Lords and the House of Commons, which are appointed and elective respectively. They have a democratic government and primarily capitalistic economy. Following is a look at the social and cultural environment of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is considered to be a low context culture, indicating that communication is typically very explicit and the emphasis is on the building of short term relationships. In addition to these aspects, the UK concludes its negotiations with formally signed and witnessed contracts. As religion goes, according to the 2001 census, 71.6% of all respondents indicated they were Christian. The remaining respondents fell into these categories. 2.8% indicated they were the Islam faith, 1% Hindu, 0.6% Sikhism, 0.5% Judaism, 0.3% Buddhism. Within the United Kingdom is the British Society of Aesthetics, whose mission it is to promote the study of, research of, and discussion of fine arts and related experiences in philosophy, psychology, sociology, history, and education. 
The UK has a diverse aesthetic culture, including literature from William Shakespeare, music from Andrew Lloyd Webber, fine art from Francis Bacon, and cinema from Alfred Hitchcock. The dietary preferences in the United Kingdom are a mix of traditional historic dishes and ethnic foods that have been introduced as a result of immigration. According to safarytheglobe.com, as the country adopts new technologies and higher incomes, the people have turned to both ethnic as well as quick service restaurants as a larger and larger portion of their diets. Let's look at the business culture. From a communication perspective, face-to-face -face communication is encouraged over all other forms. When confronted with business dealings, the United Kingdom generally will not consider the deal to be completed until there is a written contract that has been signed and witnessed. This is evidence of the fact that they are a low context culture. Considering business etiquette, the United Kingdom has shifted to believing in the importance of corporate social responsibility, with the main focus being workplace issues such as work-life balance, human rights, and employment, community contributions such as social justice, and the environmental issue of resource sustainability. Some of the well, uh, more well-known and popular dishes that are consumed in the United Kingdom include haggis, jelly deals, black pudding, fish and chips, shepherd's pie, and bangers and mash. In London, the range of foods is very diverse, and many different cultures are represented. The official language of the United Kingdom is English, and is spoken by approximately 92.3% of the population, according to the 2011 census. There are many common immigrant languages spoken in the United Kingdom. However, they do not, they do not account for more than 1% for any given language. Now let's take a look at the environmental analysis. As of 2012, roughly 14% of the U.S. market was using or had used at-home grocery delivery services. Given the social and economic similarities between the U.S. and the U.K., more specifically large cities in the U.S. and London, we feel it is a safe assumption that there will be similar percentages of use there as well. London in 2015 had a population of over 8.6 million. Assuming a 14% market for grocery home delivery, that would afford our company a target market of more than 1.2 million potential customers. Here's the current trend. Organic. Organic locally sourced produce has become more and more in demand. Having access to this type of produce might be difficult. In addition to a normal grocery service, customers can order organic local produce that gets delivered right to the customer's door. There are a few key factors in the market analysis. Although there are competitors in the grocery industry, there's less competition in grocery delivery services. This is a relatively new service that is being offered, and there is still room for a new company to make substantial profit. The service that sources produce and foodstuffs across multiple groceries and suppliers is a unique offering. The deliveries can be tailored to each customer, which is not currently being offered in this market. Because this service is primarily targeting single families and small businesses, there is less bargaining power than there would be if there were large buyers. The bargaining power of large suppliers should, not also, should also not be an issue because groceries is sourcing the products across multiple suppliers depending on price, quality, and availability. Looking at the competitors, there are six main competitors. Uh, and they make up 83.7% of the market share. Tesco at 28.4%, Sainsbury at 16.9%, Asda at 17.1%, Morrison's at 10.9%, Aldi at 5.3%, and Waitrose at 5.1%. One main note is all competitors are traditional brick and mortar grocery store chains. They offer, although they offer a delivery service, as of today, there are no delivery only services servicing this market that are not otherwise tied to a grocer. We will be positioned in the middle to upper end of the cost spectrum with our target market being those who are looking for the convenience rather than a cost savings. Being that one of the benefits of our service is the amount of time saved by not having to physically go to a grocery store, our target market are individuals that live busy, active lifestyles, working professionals, or families where both parents have 9-to-5 jobs. This type of demographic doesn't have the flexibility to go to the grocery store whenever they want and may be more willing to pay a premium for our services. Our target city of London is an ideal fit because of the fact that it has one of the highest costs of living which means that there is a greater amount of wealth in the city that can afford a premium service. It also boasts a population of 8.5 million people, which gives us a large target market and higher potential sales. Furthermore, as with most large cities, London is a food desert, making getting healthy groceries a struggle, hassle, or time-consuming process for individuals that don't have a lot of time to spare. Lastly, there is no language barrier that would make our service difficult to use.
Our entry strategy will focus on directly exporting groceries to consumers from a central location in London. This space will be affordable, yet in a location that can service the whole of London in a timely manner. We will work with local vendors that will provide us with the produce, meats, dairies, etc. And we will get these products at a price that will allow us to not be priced too high for our own consumers. Getting food from these local vendors will also allow us to keep inventory levels low. As we expand our market share, we will offer rights to franchise our brand to investors that want to capitalize on capturing incremental revenue as market share increases and demand for our service grows. This is a proven, sustainable model that will be cyclical and lead to more market share, more demand, and in turn, more franchises. This process will continue to repeat itself until we have captured our ultimate market share. Here's our marketing objective, to launch a grocery delivery service that is independent of any particular grocery store in London, UK, and build an initial market share of 15%, with projected growth of an additional 5% years two and three, and an additional 2% years four and five. Our sales objective is to generate $750,000 in year one. As we increase our market share by 5% in years two and three, we anticipate a 10% growth in sales associated with this greater market share. For year two, we anticipate $825,000 in total sales. In year three, $907,500 in total sales. As we progress into years four and five, along with the projected 2% growth in market share, um, we're looking at an additional 15% in sales associated with this market share, which should bring our, our year four totals to 1.044 million and looking at a projected year five sales of 1.2 million US dollars. The return on investment can gauge the profitability of an investment. Groceries plans to invest 3.5 million US dollars in marketing over the next five years. A high return on investment would allow groceries to justify more investment in marketing as the services expand into other markets. One of the major benefits of launching groceries in London is that the United Kingdom and the United States have cultures that share many similarities. By sharing many cultural norms, the question of standardization or adaptation becomes much easier to answer. Here's our approach. Groceries will use a combination of both standardization and adaptation. The main message will be the same as it would be in the United States. If we were to expand into other global markets, we would use the same basic marketing message and adapt it slightly for each new market. Here's a look at the rationale. Using the strategy is attractive because it allows more of the marketing budget to be spent in one overall budget and it allows us to spend less on customization for each new market. An assumption is that consumers of this type of service worldwide would share similar wants and needs. The target market worldwide consists of busy consumers with disposable income. Although the groceries and delivery method might change country to country, the message of the service would remain the same around the world. Launching in London allows groceries to use the same message as we would use in the United States. We have just slightly tailored the message to fit the grocery habits of Londoners. Let's take a look at our pricing. In addition to the price of the groceries being delivered, there is a fee for the delivery service. For larger orders, the fee goes down per dollar delivered. There is no minimum purchase required for delivery, however, there is a minimum fee. The minimum fee for delivery is £5, with the price increasing to £7.50 for grocery orders totaling over £60. The benefit of our service versus services offered by individual grocery stores is an overall lower grocery bill with higher quality groceries because the products are sourced with respect to the best quality and price available. Distribution will be handled by utilizing delivery vans and trucks. The vehicles will be dispatched based on the geographic location of the deliveries. The trucks will mainly be composed of a refrigerated section to accommodate for perishable groceries. The groceries will be delivered almost exclusively in the early morning and middle of the night to the doorstep of the customer on a predetermined day unless a special delivery is specified. The temperature of the groceries will be more easily maintained on the doorstep of the customer in the early hours of the day, keeping the produce protected. The groceries will be delivered in boxes containing the fresh produce that can be reused. The temperature sensitive dairy products and meats will be packed in a temperature controlled cooler using dry ice to protect them. Delivering at this time of day will allow the vans to reach many more customers because of the significant de decrease in traffic at these hours. 
Our communication objective is to increase the awareness of our grocery delivery service in the London, UK market to 50% within the first year of launching our service. Our budget of US $3.5 million will allow us to increase the brand awareness for our grocery delivery service in London. Our promotion mix will focus on advertising and public relations through a mix of television, newspaper, and outdoor. In addition, we will use a social media campaign targeted towards high-traffic local websites to increase reach. To maximize our reach through television advertisements, we will focus our efforts on advertisements during the evening news. Newspaper advertisements will be placed in the major morning newspapers to target working professionals for which our service is geared. Outdoor advertising will be placed in public transportation hubs to ensure that our advertisements are readily visible to morning and evening commuters. Healthier, cheaper, convenient. Are you eating too much fast food, spending a small fortune at restaurants, or too much time waiting in line for your groceries? Our service makes shopping fast, easy, and affordable. Our personal shoppers select the best meats, seafood, produce, and other goods and package them to be delivered to your front door. By eliminating the headache of grocery shopping and the expense and health issues of eating out all the time, our service saves time and money for the busy consumers of London. In conclusion, we feel that our service will strike a chord with many of the key trends of today and the future. The millennial generation is more focused on having experiences than simply purchasing products, and our service can provide that for them. It's convenient, and it helps them find healthy foods quicker. We believe that there is also massive potential growth in this up-and-coming industry, and what a better place to do it than a highly sophisticated urban setting such as London. This is a unique service that is ready to grow and become something big in our lives. Thank you for your time.